to the fact Is that mine? This one's yours. Excellent. Excellent. That was fun. Thank you, Mike. Got your documents here. You're all certified. You're ready to. Sorry, I'm bona fide. You're he's, bona fide. He's, he's bona fide. Code, so that you can make copies of these keys. Okay. So, keys to start. Cargo box keys. How we get it going? So we're going to put this barrel key in the ignition, turn it forward. You're going to see this Arkimoto logo pop up. We're going to push the brake pedal that's down on your right foot all the way to the floor and then hold down this start button that's on the back side of your left handle grip here. And we want to see this screen. This means we are in our drive mode. We have power and all that jazz. So this is your accelerator you want to pull back on this nice and gently to get it going you just pull it towards you it's an electric vehicle so it really gets up and goes this is your drive selector you'll see that here we have reverse neutral drive only three drive modes very simple um, you do want to remember when you're switching drive modes you want to be at a complete stop if you're just running through all these and messing with it the fuv is going to take a second to register what mode you're in so you got to come back to neutral and then this is your automatic kill switch. This is standard on every single motorcycle out there. This is in case of emergency. You flip this switch, you're gonna see this symbol. It's gonna cut all the power to your FUV. You'll still be able to steer and you'll still be able to use your foot brakes. And you would use that? You use that if your tire pops, if something is not feeling right to you um, that you're concerned about, you hit that, just cuts the power and it allows you to roll the safety. So coast? Yeah. Okay. Coast and you can steer and use that. 
this is the coolest part is our regenerative braking system you just use it gently and you'll coast and come to a 99% stop for that last percent you want to put your foot on the foot brake because essentially stopping with this when you're all the way stopped you're sitting in neutral so you want to put your foot on the foot brake to hold you in place now, is your foot brake cable or hydraulic hydraulics okay so that's this side over on this side we have that start button like we talked about these are your light toggles. So when you turn it on, when it's lined up with this circle, the lights are automatically on. When we move one up, you're gonna notice the screen dims and you're gonna see these two lights turn on. This is your night driving mode. One more up, you're gonna have your high beam, so still the dim screen and the extra, extra visibility. Okay, go back to the drive mode. That's night driving. And where's the brights? So we also have our hazard lights here, our horn, and our turn signal. So the turn signal, you do have to push it to which direction you want to go, and then push it like a button to shut it off. So that's this side here. Over here, we have windshield wipers, wiper fluid, front seat warmer, back seat warmer, your grip warmers, personal favorite of mine, your defrost, and your parking brake. So when you'll know your parking brake is on, all three of these lights are lit up. There's also a symbol on the screen that is a P with a circle around it. So that's how you know it's on. You shut your parking brake off, you push it like a button, you wait a few seconds, all the lights are off, that symbol's gone, that means you are good to go. I'm gonna turn it back on while we're sitting here. And then the... the so, what, is that an electric yeah. parking brake? Yep. It, it, and you can actually watch it engage uh -huh. on the back tire there. And they're all disc brakes? Um, and then these buttons don't do anything right now, but they are our hopes and dreams. Down the line, we're hoping to have traction control for off-roading, hopefully, way down the line. A different, better power steering modes for different drivers, settings, air conditioning, way, way down the line. And so, how, how are these doing on the beach? Is anybody taking them out in the dunes? Um, I actually haven't had anybody tell me they've taken it out on the dunes. I know they've driven just on flat beach uh -huh. before and they've done fine as far as I know. Uh -huh. I didn't get to be the one to do it, so. But I know some of our team when they were down yeah, in California. That's one of my first uh, places to go. Thank you. Um, so, I hope you enjoy your I'm sure I will. All right, so here's where you watch your battery. You go up and down. Here's where you have your odometer. This is where you see how much power you use, and when you use the brake, you're gonna see it push backwards so that you can see your how, how effective your region is. This is your Bluetooth sound system. It's going to come out of both these speakers. So you just find it, you hook up, and you'll be able to listen. Good to go. Here's the phone mount that you ordered. It is adjustable, so you'll be able to kind of put it how you want works best for you. Got all that? Yep. Oh, more. Well, I got it. Uh, I recorded it. I'll, yes. I'll, my head will forget it pretty quick. And you do have the two seat belts, so they need to crisscross. Both of them do have to be buckled okay. in order for your FPV to go. All right. You got it all? You, ready? you should drive it a little bit. Okay, we're going to head over to the AMP, the Arcimoto Manufacturing Plant, or Advanced Manufacturing Plant, and take a tour. So I'm here on the second day with the uh, FUV, I call Eric. We're going to meet Joe and get a plant tour. Here's a look at Eric. Still got the blue tread protectors.
we're going to get a tour with uh, Joe Morgan, number one employee. What's your official ti job title? Well, I promoted everybody in customer experience, so I don't really have a job title nice. right now. So uh -huh. we're going to create a new one. VIP. That's right. Man in charge. Welcome to the AMP. Okay. Jerry and I are going to take a look around, and uh, we're going to show you some cool stuff. Okay, let's do it. And then I'm going to show you what we can't film. Okay. Which is not very much. Just tell me when. This is the Arkimoto Manufacturing Plant. The 30,000 square feet we're looking at right here. This particular line is a U-shaped line, our airport carousel. You guys, you and I will take a closer look at that. This is kind of a fun rig right here. This is one of the rentals headed towards California. It's going to be in San Diego. Yep, kind of got a military feel to it. Yep. A little camel pattern yep. and some logos on it. Marines will like that. Right. Jeremy, this is time. This is our wall of inspiration. So like moms, dads, vendors, customers, uh, everybody you can think of, leave a note up there, and you're welcome to leave my team a note. So they, when they walk by it every day, they know why they're working so hard, trying to create something a lot bigger than us. Come on, we'll take a look at some more stuff. We offer a couple of different options. This is a beautifully painted FUV right here. And then we have some vinyl selections to you right in these blue ones, like this. And we also do some cool power yeah. coat stuff, too. This is a nice red. That's going to look like the uh, crimson red. That, very, uh, very, very close to Mark's vehicle and very close to Mom's vehicle. Uh -huh. Mom has one very similar as well. So this is a fun pair piece of equipment, Jerry. This is an LC5 from BLM. It's a two-stage laser. You can grab a whole bundle of stick, put it right in that front carriage. It goes to work on creating the upper portion of the vehicle. And you and I are going to get a little closer look at that. The left side feeds in the sheet, and it goes to work on everything else. If you haven't seen an electric motor before, BMW engine block, it has 350 components that make up that working motor. Arkimoto has this, one on the left, one on the right. We're talking about a casing, a set of field windings, and simple bearings right here. A couple high voltage connectors. We do a gearbox in the middle, front wheel drive, left and right. That way we can do some traction control stuff through software, torque factory too. Alright, we're back on. Ooh, nice. Right. So here's a motor gearbox combination, a sub-assembly ready to go. If we look immediately to our left, you see all of them staged right there, ready to go to the line. Uh, what kind of coolant do you use? So it's a very, this is just oil inside the gearbox. There's a very simple coolant loop that controls uh, the inverters when they get warm and the charger in opposite scenarios based on your usage. Here we have uh, knuckles ready to go, uh, control arms. I'm going to try to get a peek at how we create those two. Okay, this is the heat feed right here. So they just slap it right on the gantry, rotates up and into the laser. And I don't know if you can zoom in on all those parts over there, but those shelves are just loaded with cheap parts, and they're ready to go to the CNC forming machine. So what, on this facility, what kind of production can you uh, max out at? That's a great question. I'm not sure what the accurate number is. We can build three a day with no problem right now. Okay, so not quite 100 a month, maybe. Actually, be even less. If you look to the left here, these are upper structures ready to go to the line. This is what we made out of the stick tube. And if you swing to your right, this is what we call our nickname for this is the backbone. This is the central chassis of the vehicle. It houses your battery modules, your electronics. You guys bring it off the robot. It's sheet, so CNC forming to the robot. Flips it up, 
two robots stitching together. They load this up. I call it a Christmas tree. The techs probably call it something else. As this gets loaded, it goes a half a mile away from powder coat, comes into material handling, back out into the line to build your FUV. And this is what kind of kind of steel? Steel. I don't know. Okay. And you can peek in that robot horn wheel okay. and set off the thing. So you can see a fixture for a backbone. Looks like probably a front bulkhead as well. Oh, so that rotates over and presents to the robot. Right. This becomes a flash wall to you and I. Yeah, yeah. The robot goes together. The giant boom box down to your right, Jerry, is actually an air filtration center. Keep everybody safe from the uh, stuff coming off the robot. Yeah, it does look like speakers. The Grateful Dead place. Yeah. The rear swing arm assemblies right here. Seat support bracket. This is the front assembly, we call this the, uh, this is actually the tail assembly for your cargo box right here. So virtually the, the whole frame is, is built in-house? Yes sir. And then sent out for powder coating? We build everything we can right here. Uh -huh. You look down, that's material handling right in front of you. It's about 10,000 square feet out on the deck right there. It's about 180 feet of work. Find us some uh, critical stuff. See the robot going to work there. Yep. Don't film this one, but I'm going to show it to you. Anyway, okay. This is the one for the new plant. The positioning. Oh, nice. So here we're looking at gearbox components. We cast those right across town. Look off to the left, that's very white. That's the state-of-the-art 5-axis CNC. It goes to work on machining all that. Kenny G is on the right, state-of-the-art lathe. I don't think they make all the suspension and steering bit. Make everything they can right there. We see billet all around us that they're going to create in the components. Sheet all this kind of stuff. We have some DPS, electric power steering units right there ready to go. So it's a, a power steering, is it a hydraulic booster or electric? It's electric actually, uh -huh. and it's programmable, so we can adjust how much Tweak force in, we get yeah. at different speeds. Floorboards, more backbones ready to go. And then, uh, let's you and I go peek out on the line. You can't really shoot the electronics on the front assembly, but you okay. know, I'll go look at it. Okay. The fleet of assembly, we shoot this one. Looks like this. And that's the new Roadster frame? Yep. And all along it's been, you know, if we have a roller, what kind of amazing things can we put on top of it that sure. make a difference in our world? First responders, delivery vehicles, all that kind of stuff. And all cheap things you get kind of a utility deck like that. This is a TPO, so the strength of a TPO, you know, if you grab a hold of this thing it's super light uh -huh. but it'll take a sledgehammer and um, it's got really good impact resistance and if you do manage to damage them we can grind them up put it into a new sheet and then make more automotive parts out of it so it's got a nice recycle stream too. Right over here, a whole bunch of noses ready to go in the matte black, a bunch of cheeks, and we see a custom painted one in kind of that cinnamon candy over there. Nice. So this is the same color. I know even in here it looks pretty awesome yeah. on the sunlight. Yeah, it does. This is our uh, purchasing director's vehicle right here. So it's just about ready to take delivery. These are Roadster chassis all headed over to um, R&D, and so we're going to do a nice show and tell with these, show the world what we're trying to create there. And you just took it to a major bike show, and how, what was the response to the traditional bikers? It was super fun. Um, 
interestingly enough in that context guys keep asking us is it electric it's not obvious that it's electric right away yeah and then driving it a lot of consistent feedback on steers well brakes well super fun zippy acceleration super quiet so if you're listening to your music you know it's just you the environment and your music so that's cool and of course how fast will it go how quick is it what's the range on it Keep on buzzing.